Hi, my name is Dr. Catherine Hughes from Crime Psych. I'm a criminal psychologist and this video is going to be a psychological analysis of Joanna Dennehy from Peterborough who killed three men. I've done a number of psychological analysis videos in the past where I draw on research findings to give an informed opinion of what an offender's behaviour can reveal about the psychology. I am primarily a research psychologist in the area of investigative psychology, which was founded by Professor David Cantor, and I draw on the knowledge that was taught to me by Professor Cantor, which includes aspects from subjects such as psychology, criminology, sociology and many more to form my opinions. In all of my videos, I do try to focus more on the psychology of behaviour. However, it is sometimes necessary to include some details. This video contains some details of abusive and violent behaviour and murder. I'm going to give you a brief overview of the case and of the offender. Then I'll talk about the upbringing and the childhood of the offender where the information is possible because I found that can offer valuable insight sometimes. Then I'm going to discuss the behaviours during the crime that reveal psychological aspects of the offender as well as talking about any psychiatric or mental illnesses. If you do want to learn more about the psychology of crime and criminal behaviour, there are a range of courses available on my website. There's a link in the description below. Some of them are free, some of them are paid, but all of them come with a money-back guarantee. The co-owner of a small letting agent, Kevin Lee, let Joanna Dennehy a property and soon gave her some work doing some odd jobs and helping to evict tenants. The first person to be murdered was a 31-year-old Polish warehouse worker called Lukasz Slabokowicz. Because of her work, she did have access to a number of local houses. Dennehy had met the Polish warehouse worker in the town centre and he told friends excitedly about an English girlfriend. On the 19th of March 2013, Dennehy texted him and asked him to come over to the Welland Road address. They drank and they chatted. Then Dennehy persuaded him to put up on a blindfold as part of what she described as a game. She then produced a knife and stabbed him through the heart. She was unable to dispose of the body on her own and she texted Gary Stretch Richards, who was a known criminal associate of hers, to help her. Richards was, by all accounts, smitten with Dennehy and he was happy to do anything he could to help her. He was a strong seven foot three inch man. Lucas's body was put into a wheelie bin initially. Dennehy reportedly showed a 14 year old girl on the neighbourhood the body. Ten days later, Dennehy killed again. She first killed John Chapman, who was aged 56, and then finally a landlord and then lover, Kevin Lee. Stretch and another man called Leighton were called to the scene to photograph the bodies and to help Dennehy dispose of them. Chapman was said to have been high on drugs and alcohol when he was murdered, and that suggests that Dennehy might have behaved suggestively towards him. Soon after Chapman's murder, Lee received a text from Dennehy asking him to meet her and specifying that she wanted to dress him up and rape him. The 48-year-old had started an affair with Dennehy after employing her. Dennehy stabbed him in the heart and, before dumping his body, dressed him in a black sequin dress. Lee's body was found with his bottom facing upwards and exposed. The prosecution described this as a deliberately engineered act of post-death humiliation. After the murders, Dennehy phoned up Gary Richards and sang Britney Spears' Oops I Did It Again song. Stretch and the other man, Leslie Layton, who lived at the Orton Goldhay house with Dennehy, didn't go to the police. Layton even lied to the police and Stretch to help her dispose of the three bodies in farmland ditches. Dennehy and Stretch, now who was acting as her driver, went on the run. Dennehy told Stretch that she wanted to kill again. She said, I want my fun. I need to get my fun. He stopped the car on two occasions and Dennehy jumped out and reportedly stabbed two men at random. And they were 64-year-old Robin Bereza and 56-year-old John Rogers. But both of these men survived the knife attacks. Dennehy is classed as a spree killer rather than a serial killer. A serial killer has at least three victims, but have a minimum of 24 hours in between each of the murders. 
There were 10 days before the first and the second killings, but the remaining two murders were committed on the same day. She was ordered to serve a whole life prison sentence. I'm going to move on to talk about the upbringing of the offender and talk about their childhood and how she was as a young adult. According to her younger sister, Maria, Joanna Dennehy was a great kid and her parents' favourite. She's described as having a normal upbringing with doting parents and she's said to have done quite well at school. Joanna Dennehy grew up in a small town in Hertfordshire. Her sister Maria told the BBC that their parents worked hard to provide for them. Her father was a security guard and her mother was a shopkeeper. She insisted that their childhood was thoroughly normal. She said, there was a girl we loved who turned into a monster. There are no indications of family troubles whatsoever. However, Maria admitted that her sister's last minute admission of guilt in court wasn't a surprise. She said, I think she did that to control the situation. She likes to know she's the boss. Dennehy began to show serious problems in her early teens. She ran away from home at the age of 13 to be with a man her sister said was much older than her at about age 18 or 19. She began to steal from her mum and dad. Maria said that there was cannabis and drugs involved. She ran away a few more times and then finally left home for good at 16 with an older man called John Trainer. Trainer and Dennehy moved to Luton and then Milton Keynes, then Wisbeck in Cambridgeshire. She had two children before the age of 21 and she was violent with Trainer, kicking and punching him when she was drunk. She'd leave home for days without explanation. She slept with other people, she self-harmed and, as a prison psychiatrist later discovered, she had paraphilia sadomasochism. And that means she has a need to give and receive pain whilst having sex. John Trainer had suffered continual abuse and violence from Dennehy and threw her out of the house after she threatened him with a six-inch dagger. One neighbour recalled, Jo was an absolute nightmare. She was trouble from the start. She hit him all the time. He would have black eyes and marks on his face. Trainer subsequently moved north explaining, I really believe Jo is evil, pure and simple. That is why I took the girls as far away from her as I possibly could. She was known among neighbours as the man woman for her aggressive intimidation of people. She first met a landlord and subsequent victim, Kevin Lee, aged about 49, and his business partner, Paul Creed, when she was looking for a room to rent. According to Creed, she told us a story that she'd killed her father due to him raping her and having his child and then losing that child. She also showed us multiple scars on her arms and stomach. Dennehy also told another witness that she'd served 13 years in prison for killing her father because he'd been sexually abusing her since the age of five or six. Carla White, who shared a flat with a mutual friend, met Dennehy three weeks before the murders and described her as very rude and very arrogant. After shaking her hand, Dennehy told White to F off. White got feisty back towards Dennehy and then Dennehy put her hands around her throat. When White grabbed a hammer out of her bag, Dennehy let go of White's throat and apologised. Tony Ann Roberts briefly shared the house with Dennehy and describes her as being intimidating, but says she did have this disarming ability to get strangers on side very, very quickly. She said she was sort of weirdly flirtatious with people. She was very upfront about coming in, wanting to know you, wanting to know who you were and what you were all about. She was smart about figuring out who was low in confidence and how to push their buttons. The men did tend to fall at her feet like lap dogs. There was this weird hold over men, she said. We can even see this flirtatious behaviour from the CCTV from the police station. After she's been arrested, she's smiling, grinning, giggling, brushing her fingers through her hair, complimenting a policeman. It seems as though Dennehy did come from a loving family home with good parents. She was her parents' favourite child, apparently, but could be a little bit bossy. Then, from the age of about 13, things start to go wrong for her. And this is a good time to move on to talk about the psychiatric illnesses and mental health conditions.
Dennehy had already been diagnosed with a psychiatric condition. In 2012, a year before the murders, she was given a 12-month suspended sentence for assault and owning a dangerous dog. She was still under the supervision of the probation service when she murdered. Dennehy was assessed by psychiatrists to have psychopathic, antisocial and borderline personality disorders. A prison psychiatrist later discovered that she had paraphilia sadomasochism, as I mentioned at the beginning. The court were told that when she was in the police custody, she told medical staff that she had that she was on antipsychotic medication and that she suffered from bipolar disorder for which she took the medication. She also claimed to suffer from epilepsy and depression and said that she had a history of self-harming by cutting herself. The most common understanding of a psychopath is someone who is skilled at lying and manipulating other people and has very little empathy and feels very little remorse for what they've done. Although psychopaths can come across as very charming, they are at ease manipulating other people around them. And psychopathy is considered to be at the extreme end of antisocial personality disorder. So in medical terms, that's what a psychopath would be diagnosed with. Psychopaths are defined as individuals who have absolutely no concern for the feeling of others. They have a complete disregard or any sense of social obligation and they have an inability to form any lasting emotional ties. When psychopaths do turn to criminality, they use that charm and manipulation to coerce their victims into doing what they want. They might even use that charm to gain the trust of the person or the victim first. They're characterised as selfish and remorseless individuals who use others for their own selfish needs and desires. They often have a very impulsive and chronically unstable antisocial lifestyle. And that diagnosis does fit in well with what we know about Dennehy. She was also diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. The symptoms of borderline personality disorder can be grouped into four main areas. Emotional instability, disturbed patterns of thinking or perception, impulsive behaviour, an intense but unstable relationship with others. Again, this fits in well with what we know about Dennehy. It's incredibly rare for a person to be loved and socialised in a normal way to develop psychopathic tendencies. The self-harm that she inflicted indicates that she was trying to deal with some difficult emotions. When young women go out and seek the attention of older men and even go on to marry them and have children, it indicates a desire to be cared for, a desire to be looked after. They want that older man to be their protectors. But she never found this with Trainer, which isn't surprising. She's externalising her inner turmoil, which she's not been able to deal with. There are three avenues of thinking on why and how she turned into a cold killer. A psychoanalyst writer, Colleen Covington, suggests that Dennehy is killing and humiliating men for some kind of subconscious revenge on her parents because she didn't get as much attention after her sister was born. Ellie Godsey, a clinical psychologist, is convinced that she must have suffered some terrible abuse which was probably sexual relatively early in life. She said... She's an extremely disturbed young woman who no doubt has something horrific happen in her background. I would bet my mortgage on it, she said. Godsey also said she's violent and sexually violent and that doesn't happen in a vacuum. I have no idea whether it was in the family or not or whether it happened as a teenager or as a child but women do not end up like this without a history. And then she goes on to add, victims become perpetrators because feeling powerful and in control is the antidote to being powerless and controlled. She also said, usually women feel their distresses, whereas typically men act on their distresses, but not in this case. But Dr Elizabeth Yardley isn't so sure. She says, I've met psychopaths who've been through horrific abuse or neglect as a child and have gone into robot mode to survive. 
she also said, but I've also met others who've had normal upbringings, been socialised in a seemingly normal way and have still done horrific things without any conscience. My personal opinion is that she must have suffered some trauma around the age of 13 or before. Of course, we don't know what that might be. Not all murderers are psychopaths, but those that are normally have some identifiable trauma in their life history. If you do want to learn more about the psychology of murderers and serial killers, have a look at my online courses which are available on my website. There have been numerous studies in the news about her behaviour since being imprisoned. Denahe laughed and smirked as Judge Justice Spencer branded her a cruel, calculating, selfish and manipulative serial killer. During her summing up, Denahe muttered in the dock and shouted out the word B-O-L-L-O-C-K-S. In prison, Denahe quickly established herself as the shock caller. She has the guards and inmates at her beck and call. Denahe told a prison psychologist, I killed to see how I would feel, to see if I was as cold as I thought I was. Then it got Moorish. There have been stories of her trying to escape, writing letters and developing relationships with those outside as well as other people in prison. She went on to marry one of the other female inmates and continues to be a difficult prisoner to this day. Denhe craved notoriety and wanted to humiliate her victims through sick sex games. Before the killings, she'd boasted that she'd already killed four times. In conclusion, then, John Denehay is a very dangerous woman. She appears to have evolved from a happy and loved child into a psychopathic killer who asserted her dominance over those who she met. She had a chaotic lifestyle. She didn't have any empathy for those around her. She used charm and flirtatious behaviour to draw people in. She has very violent tendencies and is very deeply disturbed. I do hope that you found this psychological analysis video interesting and more importantly that you've learned something from it. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.